Hello everybody. Uh, now we'll start uh, this module one of this course, the materials processing and casting, forming, and welding process. So module starts with the introduction of two materials processing, and I have divided this module in the several small small parts such that you'll be able to focus one particular topic uh, throughout this uh, lectures of this course. So module 1 consists of these four different parts you can see that one is the first is the materials and microstructure evolution because it is an introduction level. Then we will try to understand the basics of the heat conductions. After that we will understand the basics of the fluid flow and we will try to focus on the few numerical problems or case studies associated with the this uh, material processing subject. And uh, now we will start with the first part the materials and microstructure evolution. So, we understand that material processing involves is basically very complex uh, series of the chemical, thermal and the physical processes. So, uh, and finally, we will try to when we pass through all these basics process the chemical, thermal and physical processes of a particular component and we develop structure and then one particular microstructure wants to develop and we try to find out uh, this particular application or other way if we try to find out the application of a particular component and to get this particular application we can cater the microstructure and to attend the particular microstructure then we decide the what can be the different physical chemical or processes can be gone through to get this particular uh, component with for the targeted application. So basically material processing first understand the material science and engineering so understanding about the materials itself. Then we try to think about the how this materials particular materials can be processed or uh, the, what kind of the manufacturing technologies we should follow to get the desired product or which what we can utilize in our uh, everyday life. So that is the basic understanding of the materials processing. So in this case if both are involved both are important the materials as well as the manufacturing processes. Now we know the materials is available and the and naturally in there having uh, different uh, forms various forms and some materials is available in a plenty and there might be some materials is may not be the scarcity might be there. So both options are there here. Now overall we can uh, utilize the materials can be organic materials or it can be the inorganic materials and some materials can be renewable user and some materials can be non-renewable both options are also there. But raw materials is basically produced through the mining. So we get some resource from there we can extract the material then we follow the harvesting process uh, uh, of this particular material and then we uh, regenerate or we can develop this material which is can be used or uh, ready to for the different manufacturing processes. Now in this case when you try to uh, process the raw materials into a uh, usable materials before the following the steps of the manufacturing process the raw materials can be import the different kind of the physical chemical and the mechanical characteristics and that we can be as per the requirement. We will try to explain that uh, taking an example and then with this particular example we can understand that how this materials uh, can be converted to a product uh, when we pick up from the uh, in the in the mining area this particular material. <coughs> so for example pure aluminum, pure aluminum is actually very soft and exactly we are not in the raw materials may not be available in the form of pure aluminum. So we have to convert to the pure aluminum or we can in between we can import some kind of the physical properties for the pure aluminum such that this particular alloy can be used one particular application. So for example the pure aluminum is very soft but when aluminum can be converted to the aluminum uh, alloy so there may be the different possibilities of the different aluminum alloy. So when you convert the aluminum alloy which can be applicable for the engine component but which is may not be uh, the engine component may not be required as the pure aluminum. Pure aluminum can be used in somewhere else. So like that also wrought iron which is basically excessive uh, uh, the uh, not suitable for the corrosive environment because it can easily corrode uh, during the application of the uh, wrought iron. So in this case if you alloying the uh, wrought iron that means if you mix up with the other elements and convert it to the steel 
then still we know the steel is having very, very high corrosive and it can act uh, it can work in the corrosive environment so basically steel is having a high corrosion resistance so like that only because although we are making the the steel from the wrought iron but wrought iron is uh, very corrosive but other way when converted to the steel then steel is the basically uh, uh, is a corrosive resistance properties is having in the steel so that is why application of the steel is a, a different area or maybe we need this uh, application in the corrosive environment then we need to convert from wrought iron to the steel so this is the one way we can import the physical properties of the to the raw materials uh, which is can be usable uh, one particular application so so there are three steps from starting material to the final product to get basic the three steps one is the preparation of the starting material so first the preparation material has to be ready such that this material can be further processed through several manufacturing processes and of course once the manufacturing process is followed and sometimes we need to follow some kind of the post processing operation to make it the usable one particular application so that is why we can follow three basic steps preparation of the starting material then processing operations and then after that post processing operation but our focus manufacturing process is mostly associated with the processing operation so processing operation in general we can say like that there are five types or five categorization based on the state of the matter for example when you try to process any material or we can follow different manufacturing technologies uh, of particular material then the it can have the five different state for example it may be necessary to melt the particular material to, if you want to follow certain manufacturing process or sometimes we can say directly solid we can utilize we can deform the solid but without going to the melting stage in this way we can there are so many manufacturing processes may be involved associated with the solid state deformation then it can convert raw materials can be directly used in the form of a powder rather than melt or rather than solid component directly powder can be utilized uh, for the or can be processed through different manufacturing technologies then solution dispersion of the solution can be utilized in the form of a raw material or that can be direct process and that might be having associated with some kind of the manufacturing processes and finally in the form of a vapor also for example in certain try to make a, the coating uh, the metallic coating on a surface we usually use the raw metal in the form of a vapor and then the vapor can be deposited and that deposited layer can be uh, can act as a coating of this particular material so i mean to say that there are three different five different types of the matters we usually follow uh, to develop in the form of a raw materials and uh, uh, that utilize to the in the certain manufacturing processes and that converted to in the in the form of a product but types of the materials we use in this case the metals can be directly used it can be uh, ceramics it can be polymers all can be processed through the different processing operations but in that case their scientific and engineering principle can be understood such that we can apply the certain manufacturing process i mean to say that in this case uh, although we understand the different uh, basic processes there in the from a different state of the uh, uh, basic state of the matter whether it is solid or there is the melting solid or whether it is solution or vapor but based on that we can decide what can be the principle of the manufacturing process so that is why all, all manufacturing process they follow certain principle for example uh, in this case for example the most manufacturing process are here there is a forming operation so shaping operation machining operation joining casting semi solid processing edit these are the all manufacturing processes so all manu and the, in this case forming process means we we generally deal with the the solid form of the raw material so solid form of the raw metal that can be deformed uh, the plastically deformed and to get the desired shape similarly in case of machining we just remove the material from the component to get the desired shape and that can be in the solid state similarly joining and casting they work on the joining can be done both in the melt state on the solid state also so joining can be done with the melt the material and fusion welding process we melt the metal and join the component allow the solidification you can join the component so it means that basic raw materials can be processed using the the melting state similarly casting is the manufacturing process but in this case we need to melt the 
raw materials and then we follow solidification procedure to get the cast product. So, like that even similar additive manufacturing process can be in the solid state additive manufacturing process and uh, in that case is the, the liquid state additive manufacturing process. So, all the different state ad additive manufacturing technologies has been developed. So, that is why so uh, manufacturing processes it follow certain basic principle and the we can process the material following we, when once we understand the basic principle then we can decide which manufacturing process can be applicable what type of the materials whether it is applicable for the both uh, metallic materials non metallic materials or it is it is restricted to only the non metallic material so this kind of the information can be required and is applicable or useful once we understand the basic principle of the different manufacturing processes so now if you try to look in the different manufacturing, these are the name of the different manufacturing process or definitely we try to discuss their principle of the manufacturing process in the due course of the time. So, but if we categorize or we try to understand what are the common manufacturing process, these are the for example, non traditional processing, finishing operations, designing the tools and die, appropriate tool and die materials which is associated to the metal forming process. Then sometimes we can look into the other aspect not exactly the technology, but in that case sometimes we will try to look into the energy efficient and environment friendly manufacturing processes also in that case the aspect is more on the environment concern is more important. So, based on that we can select the different types of the manufacturing processes and of course some, some point of time manufacturing processes under safe and the healthy working conditions also. So, health concern and working conditions is also important to select the particular manufacturing process. So, here directive is different uh, uh, to select the different manufacturing processes. But uh, manufacturing process once we understand the manufacturing process it is also important to look into the different monitoring and control processes of the manufacturing processes and assuring the product quality and of course any many uh, other aspects associated with the manufacturing process and of course once you try to get the uh, this particular product. So, here focus is not exactly the different aspects for example, I am not focusing on the, the environmental issues or energy efficiency of the manufacturing process rather I am more focusing on the manufacturing technologies developed applicable for the one particular material. So, overall we can say that material processing actually consists of the very critical steps and that is converting the raw material into the useful form, but which require features and properties. So, definitely we are converting raw materials uh, to the useful form that means one particular uh, product. In this case, it is associated with the properties that means what is the properties of the final product we are looking for and of course, what are the required required features which is available at the end product. So, all this scatter through the uh, material processing and which follow the basic steps of the converting simply from the raw material to the useful component. So, that is the in general uh, one way we, one sentence we can say the about the material processing uh, in this particular case. But this material processing can be in the different scale also macro level material processing. There are so many material processing technologies are available or I can say the manufacturing processes are available associated with the it is well set. Well said means there are development is happening till uh, it is evolving some changing of the existing methodologies also also uh, gradually uh, going on associated with this thing macro level. But nowadays the we can see the miniature component the application of the miniature component is gradually evolving. So, therefore, macro and nano scale processing which is in high demand. So, they even also there is a need to explore this particular component or different manufacturing technologies. And of course, it is not like that the micro scale and nano scale manufacturing just simply reduction of the scale from the macro level manufacturing process. There are so many issues associated with the when you try to directly reduce the scale from the macro scale to the nano scale, but we need to address all these issues when you try to develop macro scale or the nano scale manufacturing process or I can say the different material processing technologies we try to follow. For example, uh, micro electromechanical system MEMS devices, there are lots of use of the MEMS devices uh, nowadays, but if you try to look into the 
MEMS process, it's having the, there are so many physical domain associated with the MEMS process. For example, it's a, in the interface between the electrical, mechanical, fluid, all of them and therefore it is very important how they are interacting between these two. When they are try to analyze what are the, what a electrical, mechanical and fluid uh, flow are interacting in a MEMS devices, then it becomes a multi-physics problem. So, you need to understand the different, uh, the interaction between these two, one try to successfully develop the MEMS devices. So, of course, MEMS devices is basically, is the, if you, the manufacturing scale can be in the micro manufacturing scale or the uh, nano manufacturing uh, level. So, we need to understand the different micro scale manufacturing processes or nano scale manufacturing processes when you try to develop the MEMS device. I mean to say that there is a need to convert from the conventional manufacturing process or macro scale manufacturing process to the micro scale or nano scale manufacturing processes to meet the demand of the miniature components and which is very important in this current situation and we need to understand all these things when you try to analyze this particular course, the introduction to material processing. Now, I am focusing on the different manufacturing processes uh, now onwards. So, here manufacturing processes, we know that conversion of the resources into the raw materials that is the part of the mining and metallurgy. But in this case, we will more focus on the raw materials to the final product uh, that is associated with the different management. This is broadly, we can say like that, uh, the division for the raw material to the, uh, in the resources, the resources into the raw materials, that is the part of the mining and metallurgy. And once the raw materials are available, then we think about the how these raw materials can be input uh, converted to the product and that is under the category of the manufacturing processes. Now, if you look into the different manufacturing process, we see there is a casting process, which is the first step of the manufacturing process, because through the casting process, we can raw material, we can melt the materials, we can add certain elements and we can get the desired shape after solidification and that part, that billets and the part can be ready to process the uh, applicable to the manufacturing, uh, any other manufacturing processes. So, that is why the casting and solidification which you can consider the first step of the manufacturing process. One cast component is there, then we can take the, the particular shape we want to make it, we can follow the machining operation, simply removing of the material uh, from the cast component. So, once we think about the machining operation to get the, uh, the desired shape, then th there might be application of the joining if the large component is there or it is not possible to make very complex component uh, through machining operation, then we can make a small, small part and then we can assembly or we can do the joining operation for all this component. So, this is the third step of the manufacturing process I can say. So, once the joining or assembly is there, then we think about how to bring uh, the the attractive appearance of all this particular component. Then we can follow certain finishing operation to get the desired surface roughness. We follow any finishing operation and sometimes we can impart the coating on the component also. So, all the post processing or finishing operation can be done uh, in the third step. So, these are the three different steps of the any manufacturing uh, process or when you try to make the uh, component. But once we try to understand the manufacturing process, we have the lots of different casting techniques are available, different machining technologies are also available, different joining or welding techniques are available, finishing operation available. Now, now point is that while that so many manufacturing processes, different technologies, technologies are available, then how to choose one particular technology or series of the technologies, manufacturing technologies to get the particular component. Then we need to follow very specific design or understanding of the different manufacturing process. We understand that principles of the different manufacturing process then only or different manufacturing technologies only then only we can apply this particular technology to get a manufacture one particular component. So, therefore, understanding manufacturing process link with the first is the design. So, design of the process manufacturing process should be done in such a way that we it should be most economical way. So, there might be possibilities of the one component can be manufactured there are several ways, but we need to follow the most economic manner. So, in that case, you have to design or sequence of the manufacturing processes. And then production, once we design the manufacturing process to follow one particular component, one particular raw material, then we think about the selection of the 
most important or optimization of the process parameter. Suppose we follow casting process then or one particular welding process if we follow. Then we have to optimize what can be the parameters can be utilized for this particular uh, geometric shape or particular thickness or this particular material. So, therefore, that is the next task to select the, the optimum process parameter. Once we select the optimal process parameter, then we go for selecting the choose the process parameters and follow the particular manufacturing process that is in that is called in the production stage. Then development of the new techniques also there for example, we are facing difficulties or may not be the most economic manner the manufacturing process then we try to develop the new techniques new manufacturing process or this either new techniques can be developed or we can think about the modification of the existing technology such that our new product or one modification of the product if required will be meet this requirement by simply modifying the the existing manufacturing technologies or developing of the new manufacturing technologies. So, for example, additive manufacturing process, I can say that it is a kind of the new manufacturing technology. This has been developed or kind and recently it has been evolving. And, and because there is a demand or there is a uh, certain advantage is there, that is why this new manufacturing technologies and be uh, additive manufacturing technology has been developed. So, we will discuss in details also in the when there is a need to or focus on the additive manufacturing processes. So, overall we can say that this production process, this cannot be solved always by the conventional method. I mean to say that we cannot see follow the develop the product just by following the conventional manufacturing process. So, then we have to think about the non-conventional manufacturing process or unconventional manufacturing processes to develop one particular product. Now, overall basic manufacturing processes, these are the casting, foundry and molding. These are the first manufacturing process that will cover up in this particular syllabus. Then forming on the metal working process that is also in this particular syllabus. But machining on metal removing process, this is excluded in this, part, uh, in this particular course. Then we will follow the joining and the assembly that means welding, different welding process we will try to look into. To some extent we will try to look into the surface treatment and the finishing processes also. Heat treatment also will try to follow and then non-conventional manufacturing process also will discuss and finally, we will discuss the additive manufacturing process depending upon the what type of the materials we are handling. There we will try to explain the different additive manufacturing process associated the so far has been developed or associated with the particular materials. Now, if we will try to understand the different manufacturing process, how it works, we can see the example of the hot rolling process. So, it is a kind of the metal forming process or metal working process. So, hot rolling means first we heat the material in the desired temperature then uh, such that once we heat it the strength actually reduces of this particular component. Then it will be easy to deform the material to get the desired process, desired shape. So, you see the two rollers hot rolling two rollers are there and thus the, this workpiece is basically heated and then we try to deform or to, to reduce the thickness of this particular material. And of course, this hotted material but here operation is done is the before below the melting point temperature. So, that is the uh, principle of the hot metal forming process. Similarly, suppose we can bend the sheet metal to get the particular product. If you follow the second picture also, we can see the different bending sheet metal forming operation. So, it is uh, the try to bend the sheet metal to the uh, the particular angle. So, there are specific technology we can follow and of course, we need to understand the deformation behavior of the material to understand the sheet metal forming operation or bulk deformation process like hot rolling process also. So, all this case the manufacturing technology you can understand here, but here we need to understand the principle of the manufacturing process. I mean to say that how we deform, whether elastically deform, plastically deform or up to what extent we can deform, what we can design the tool and such that we can get the uh, the bending required bending angle. All these uh, questions will be answerable if you try to understand the principle of the, the metal forming process. Similarly, additive manufacturing process also you can see that in additive manufacturing process there is a uh, this it is a the powder waste process is that powder is basically deposited uh, or may be kept on a one uh, over the bed and then we scan the laser uh, over the powder then 
along to the scanning path of the laser that part will melting and the solidification usually occurs. So, after solidification it is the that that part will be there. So, once you do one particular layer in the repeated then the next layer we can perform the same uh, similar operation depending upon the shape of the product. So, that is why layer by layer we are performing the operation and then once we all layer we are added they will get to the complete product. So, this is the principle of the additive manufacturing process. So, of course, there are so many variants technologies are available associated with the additive manufacturing process we will discuss later on. Here also simply you can get the example also this particular complex product can be developed using the additive manufacturing process. So, easily one particular manufacturing process and it can eliminate there are so many conventional manufacturing process. So, here is the advantage of this particular uh, additive manufacturing process associated with the that complex shape of the component. So, I mean to say that if the, the shape can be sometimes the shape of the particular component can decide the what manufacturing process we can choose uh, to develop this particular product. Now, if we follow the selection of the manufacturing process, what are the different factors to select the manufacturing process? These are the factors. One is the fabrication of the products. So, fabrication of the products, it can under whether we should follow the, to do the single manufacturing process or we can follow the multiple manufacturing process which can be in sequence. This is a traditional process. So, one particular component may not be produced only just following the single manufacturing process. But nowadays, one particular complex component can be produced the using the additive manufacturing. That is, I can say the single manufacturing process. But in conventional process, we follow then we need to it may necessary to follow the sequence of the manufacturing process to get the product. Second is the shape of the part of the product that actually decides whether what kind of the whether you should follow the single manufacturing process or we can follow the uh, multiple manufacturing process in a sequence. Then material properties also important in another factor to decide the manufacturing process whether it is a castability, formability, weldability or machinability that means easily machinable or easily weldable or easily castable is there. So, that properties can be linked that part can be linked with the material properties. Next as the even for the for example, the change of the material properties during the that may also happen that is another factor because one is perform the metal forming operation the material properties can change because metal is having strain hardening effect. So, metal becomes more harder strength becomes much more forming but ductility can be reduced. So, that can usually happens once you perform one particular manufacturing process. So, that factor has to be incorporated or has to be looked into to design on the manufacturing process or to, to select the any manufacturing process. Then size of the product, part of the product that is also important whether very complex shape is there then we should follow the manu uh, additive manufacturing process or we can follow any kind of the non-conventional manufacturing process. And of course, size what scale of the manufacturing process we can follow whether it is macro manufacturing whether it is micro manufacturing or the nano manufacturing process and based on that we can select the manufacturing process just to size of the looking into the size of the component. And then finally, the rate of the production uh, whether it is economic or not or minimum cost is involved or not and finally, we try to analyze the production cost once we follow the design of the complete manufacturing system then we understand the production cost. So, I mean to say that these are the all factors we have to look to choose or to decide one particular manufacturing process. Now, uh, if you look into that uh, one particular component that there are several ways to manufacture one particular component. I can take an example also different ways. So, if you look into the this is the first of for example, this is the geometric this component you want to design or you want to manufacture. So, you can follow the directly casting process or sometimes we can follow the powder metallurgy process. So, single step this component can be or single manufacturing process the component can be done. Now, look into the second picture also. So, here uh, forging or upsetting uh, can be done or any metal forming operation uh, can be done such that uh, initially we take a one shape and then we design the die this particular shape and we can follow the apply the load on the from the top surface and once you enter the die and plastically deform the metal you can take the shape of the die and that equivalent to the shape of this particular component. So, simply metal forming following the metal forming operation we can design or you can manufacture this particular component or even using the extrusion this is another metal forming operation follow the extrusion operation uh, this component can also be manufactured or 
from the cylindrical component we eat it and we can remove the extra material to get the design by following in the machining operation then also in that way we can also manufacture this particular component or we can manufacture to the upper part and lower part and then we can assemble we can join these two components and then the particular component can be uh, manufactured so i can see that there are the same component can be manufactured in the following the different strategy or different ways or different manufacturing processes so there are so many options to comp to design or to develop one uh, component by following the different manufacturing processes but finally we try to look into which is the economical or which is the superior in terms of the final properties the strength properties and ductility properties or other properties if you look into which case is the superior that can be the if this is the criteria then we can follow on manufacturing process if the strength and properties is not the criteria then you try to look into which is more economical based on that we can decide which manufacturing process we should follow i mean to say that there are so many options but we have to take the decision as per the requirement of the end product here also you can see the some examples also that you can see the selection of the manufacturing process so see the part of the car component wheel component this can be this component can be directly casting we can make this particular component or we can take a complete sheet we can remove we can follow the sheet metal forming operations by take the particular shape both way we can manufacture this component mm -hmm. similarly suppose you want to manufacture this particular gear either from the uh, one uh, shape the cylinder we take a raw metal in the form of a cylindrical shape and we remove the material to the machining operation then also you can make the gear but also directly you can make the die and you can follow the powder metallurgy technique compact the powder and we get the desired uh, this particular gear so both operations can be both the ways we can get this particular component similarly suppose you want to manufacture the crank shaft also here you can see the forging operation can be done uh, that means metal forming operation to get the desired shape or this component can be manufactured using the casting operation so both operations both manufacturing process can be followed to develop this particular component similarly fourth one is the if you know the most uh, common example the frying pan here we can get the directly the component the using the cast iron the cast of this thing or we can take a sheet metal and uh, we can take the desired shape the sheet metal forming operations also we can get this particular component so these are the few examples such that the following the different manufacturing process we can develop the product now if you follow the classification of the manufacturing is very quickly because we'll discuss in details the different manufacturing processes one is the casting processes uh, one is that is the expandable mold and pattern this is the one type of the casting process so where the pattern and mold you know the in casting operation the pattern and mold both are used but mold can be destroyed or mold can be deformed and both pattern can be destroyed so one following this principle there is a one uh, casting process developed that is called the investment casting similarly expandable mold but pattern permanent pattern we can utilize the permanent pattern in this case the casting operation is the sand casting process and when you use the permanent mold in the die casting or centrifugal casting processes this permanent mold can be used. so i mean to say that casting processes but different ways there are so many casting processes are available but these are the basic categorization of the uh, casting process the expandable mold and pattern whether expandable mold permanent pattern and permanent mold we'll discuss in details when you try to follow the casting the particular module of the casting process now here try to get the overall view of the different bulk deformation process i can say the metal deformation process there are four types of the metal deformation process one is the rolling forging extrusion and drawing operation so rolling forging extrusion and the drawing process these are the comes under the bulk deformation process so because there is another separate category of the sheet metal forming operation so here rolling operation we can see these are the different the rolling operation the rolling uh, process has been developed depending upon the what uh, what is the placement of the rolls so sometimes you can use the backing rolls also back rolls and sometimes the high rolls mean the several layers of the rolls you can utilize we can develop the technology depending upon the applications then forging operations that what we can apply the load here in this case is the drop forging some we can some impact load also press forging gradually you can apply the load also offset forging the different way the 
uh, roll forging using the roll operation and gradually you can apply the forging pressure to deform the material. So, I mean to say that depending upon the what way the load is applied there are so many forging operation has been developed associated with the bulk deformation process. Similarly, extrusion process we can apply the load also forward load, backward load, hydrostatic and closed cavity extrusion that means we can create the cavity and then extrude the material. So, based on the that uh, this application of the load also type of the load there are different extrusion process has been developed. Similarly, drawing operations also in this case the drawing operation is basically we understand the wire drawing operation. So, we just pulling the wire through the die and to get the different size of the wire. So, it can be the single stage or it can be the multiple stage. If you try to reduce further the diameter of the wire then we can follow the multi pass drawing operation. So, these are the bulk deformation process. Similarly, sheet metal forming operation we have the different the bending operation, drawing operation here also, shearing operation and the forming operation. These are the four basic categorization of the sheet metal forming operation. In this case, we can follow the roll bending, drawing, stretching, press bending. So, these are the different variant of the bending operation, what uh, we are applying the load and how what we can design the die also associated with this bending operation. Similarly, the drawing operation in this case, drawing operation is basically the from the deep drawing operation is basically associated with the sheet metal. Sheet metal is there and you can make the form of a cup. So, in that case, accordingly we can follow the, we can draw the sheet metal and to get the desired shape. So, similarly the shearing operation is also there which is associated with the sheet metal operation that is called the punching and the blanking to get the desired shape and the but material remove is, removal is there but following the shearing action in this particular operation. Similarly, the forming operation is also there which is under, under category of the sheet metal forming operation and in this case we can follow the spinning and the stretch forming also there. And finally, we try to look into the high energy rate forming. So, high energy rate forming we have the different way they apply the, the energy that is the we can utilize the explosive such that high impact load will be there and the rate of energy application is very high in these cases and it can be high electro hydraulic, it can be the electromagnetic forming all this categorization is come under the high energy rate forming operation. So, basically the this energy different types of the energy is utilized to deform the material. So, that is but in this case the energy requirement is very high energy is applied to deform the material that is why it is come under the high energy rate forming operation. So, along with that we have the categorization of the different welding processes or joining processes. One is that fusion welding process and if you are on the fusion welding we need to melt the material and under the fusion welding process there are different types of the welding process that is the electric current, high energy beam that means high energy beam the laser and the electron beam and the chemical source energy can be utilized to develop the different fusion welding process. For example, the arc induction magnetic resistance. So, arc welding, induction heating welding, magnetic welding also there, resistance welding also there all these cases is the responsible the generation of the heat is associated following the different principles. Similarly, high energy beam is the laser electron beam is utilized and the chemical source is the gas and the thermite welding process. So, these are the here the chemical energy is utilized to melt the material and to perform the fission welding operation in this particular case. Similarly, the welding can also be done on the solid state that means below the melting point temperature and in this case maybe the temperature can goes up to 70 to 80 percent or even more than that of the 70 to 80 percent of the melting point temperature. So, under solid state welding process there are so many different technologies has been developed one is the cold forming, then uh, cold welding, friction welding, friction stair welding, diffusion welding, ultrasonic welding, uh, electromagnetic and explosive welding all comes under the solid state welding process because whole operation is done below the melting point temperature. Then another categorization of the uh, welding joining process that is come on the solid and liquid state joining. Here we have written the solid liquid state in means that that one case is the parent metals becomes the solid state but the which metals is joined that do two parent metals and that can be in the liquid state and that is called the bridging, soldering and the uh, adhesive uh, welding process and sometimes you can utilize the adhesive also to join the two component which is comes under the solid liquid state joining process. Then 
joining process or another joining process that is called the mechanical bonding. In this cases, we need the riveting, any kind of the screw, bolt and not joining stitch, staples, all comes under the mechanical bonding. So, in this case, is no need to melt the material and in this case, it can create either permanent or the semi-permanent of the welding, but without any fusion, without any deformation of the material or without any solid and liquid state joining operation associated with the mechanical bonding process. So, once we understand the joining process, then we can see there the other manufacturing process which is associated with the polymer processing. So, that means what are the polymer material can be handled uh, associated with different manufacturing process. So, here three different one is the thermoplastics polymer, th the three categorization we can do the thermoplastics and the thermosets. These are the two different types of the plastics uh, uh, polymer components and they can there are so many manufacturing technologies associated with this thing. For example, in case of the thermoplastics, we can follow the extrusion process, injection molding, blow molding and the thermoforming operation associated with the thermoplastics. Similarly, thermosets also, it is there are so many other manufacturing processes for thermoset compression molding, uh, vacuum transfer molding, all these are the basic types of the manufacturing process associated with the thermosets. And of course, another polymer processing, which is another category you can make it, the additive manufacturing process. In this case, there are so many additive manufacturing technologies has been used for the processing of the polymer. That means to make the polymer converted to the one product we can follow the additive manufacturing, but exclusively for the polymer material. So, there are several types of the additive material, stereolithography, fused deposition modeling and laminated object manufacturing. These are the main types of the manufacturing, additive manufacturing process which is associated with the polymer uh, processing. So, I have mentioned here the different types of the manufacturing process, there, but there might be other manufacturing process which may be very typical to follow in the polymer processing, but here I have mentioned only on the uh, main manufacturing process or basic manufacturing process associated with the polymer processing. Now, if we look into the manufacturing process overall, there are length scale can be different of the manufacturing process. For example, macro manufacturing, micro manufacturing, and manufacturing. So, all these cases the length scale of the manufacturing, the that materials, the geometric shape we are handling or following the manufacturing process affected by the manufacturing process on the over the deformation zone or molten zone which is in the the either in the form of a macro scale with the order of the 100 to 500 micrometer or it can be uh, uh, more than that that is the macro manufacturing or we order that around 500 to 1000 micrometer which is comes under the micro manufacturing uh, roughly I am talking about and nano manufacturing even below the in the order of the nano scale. So, here macro manufacturing, casting, forging, welding and joining can be both in the macro manufacturing operations, but the reduced scale manufacturing process similar way we can utilize in the for micro manufacturing. For example, uh, micro welding and joining processes are available, even nano joining processes are also available, but the scale are different in these cases. But micro manufacturing process, some example is that of course, conventional manufacturing can be used even non-conventional manufacturing has been developed to handle the micro manufacturing or the processes that one is the lithography, printed circuit board, these are the examples, MEMS, micro to mechanical devices, micro joining all are the different types of the or component which is utilized uh, under the scale of the micro manufacturing. Similarly, Nano manufacturing, we try to discuss the manufacturing process which is works in the atomic scale. And in this case, the most resource uh, in the atomic scale manufacturing or nano scale manufacturing is the laser beam. Because laser beam is very precisely controlled, that is why it can be utilized in case of the nano manufacturing and most widely used in the even for the laser can also be used in case of the different micro manufacturing processes. So, length scale is the another part. And I think we have tried to discuss the basics of the uh, the introductory level, the material processing and different manufacturing process I have tried to explore, but I just given the overview of the different manufacturing process and I think that is all uh, for this uh, particular module. We will try to explore more in the subsequent modules. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Mm -hmm.